DPP HIV 1 and 2 instructions for whole blood dilution method. The DPP HIV 1 and 2 assay for whole blood contains the following components. The DPP test device. The whole blood sample loop. A black cap sample tainer for diluting specimens and a green cap running buffer bottle. Note that the DPP test device has two colored lines in the test window. One is blue and the other is green. Materials required but not provided include a clock, watch or other timing device. Remove the DPP test device from the foil pouch and place it on a flat surface. Label the device with the patient identification number. Label the black cap sample tainer with the patient ID number. Then remove the top by unscrewing the white cap from the bottle. Obtain a venous or fingertip blood sample according to your normal laboratory practices. If you're taking a sample from a fingertip, wipe away the first drop of blood after pricking the finger and sample from the second drop. Touch the sample loop to the drop of blood, allowing the opening of the loop to completely fill with blood. To transfer venous blood from a collection tube, use a 10 UL lab pipette rather than the sample loop. Place the collected sample into the labeled black cap sample tainer. Ensure that the loop with the sample rests on the bottom of the bottle. Gently break the loop by applying pressure to the shaft at the break notch. Discard the loop shaft into a waste container. Place the white cap with the upper black cap back onto the sample tainer containing the loop tip. After securing the cap tightly, gently shake the bottle back and forth for 10 seconds. Remember to mark the bottle with a sample ID. Applying the sample. Before you apply the sample, make sure the DPP HIV 1 and 2 test is placed on a flat surface. Now, unscrew the upper black cap, keeping the white cap screwed onto the sample tainer. Hold it in a vertical position, but upside down, and gently squeeze exactly two drops of the sample into the round sample well without touching the bottom of the well with the tip. Be aware that holding the bottle sideways will produce invalid results. Now wait five minutes. Applying the buffer. Ensure that the colored lines have disappeared from the test window before you apply the buffer. Then remove the green cap of the running buffer bottle. Hold it in a vertical position but upside down and gently apply four drops of buffer into the square buffer well, again without touching the bottom of the well with the tip. Be aware that holding the bottle sideways will produce invalid results. After about three minutes, a reddish color will spread across the strip in the test window as a signal that the lines are starting to appear. Read the results. After adding the running buffer, wait at least 10 minutes, but no longer than 25 minutes before reading the results. And always follow CDC guidelines about how to best inform the test subject. Reading test results earlier than 10 minutes or later than 25 minutes after the addition of running buffer to buffer well 2 may yield erroneous results. First, Make sure that a reddish control line has formed above the C marking in the test window. If no control line is visible, then the test is invalid and a new test must be run. If no line has formed above the T marking in the test window, the result is non-reactive, meaning that the patient is preliminarily negative for HIV-1 and or HIV-2 antibodies. Be aware that this does not necessarily exclude HIV infection. If a reddish line is visible above the T marking and a line is visible above the C marking in the test window, then the result is reactive, meaning that the patient is preliminarily positive 
for HIV-1 and or HIV-2 antibodies. The results must then be confirmed by a more accurate method.